Hello, thanks for uh, watching this video. Um, in today's video, we're going to be discussing uh, Charcot Marie Tooth Disease, also known as uh, Hereditary Motor Sensory Neuropathy. Uh, so first, let's uh, begin, like always, with uh, pathophysiology. Um, this is an uh, autosomal dominant condition. Uh, it's not a specific disease, but rather it's a spectrum of diseases uh, that's related to the myelin sheath. So it's a primarily going to be a peripheral uh, nervous system condition. And so what is a myelin sheath? Well, uh, or the myelin in general, the myelin is something that's produced by the Schwann cells to wrap around the nerves and this increases the nerve conduction velocity. Uh, Charcot Marie Tooth CMT, uh, there's one to seven different types uh, depending on the different types of mutations that are there. So the mutations can range uh, anywhere from the production of the myelin to expression of the myelin. So depending on which one it is, it gives you a different type. Uh, so now let's talk about the uh, different types of uh, muscles that are involved. Uh, so here's the muscles of the lower legs. Um, uh, that's going to be a frontal view and a lateral view. Uh, the two main muscles that are involved are going to be the peroneal muscles and the tibial muscles. And um, these muscles, um, the, you have peroneus there, tibial anterior, and the peroneus brevis. So uh, right now I'm going to be kind of coloring the peroneus longus. Uh, and that's, that's in the anterior, and here is the lateral. So you can see that where, where the damage uh, would occur. And there's the tibial anterior that I'm going to be uh, kind of shading in there. And here is on the lateral side, I'm uh, shading it in. And uh, finally, uh, let me just shade that in. And then finally, we have the brevis. So you have the brevis laterally there. And um, you also kind of have this muscle. The uh, longus can also be affected. So um, generally what you'll see is uh, the, these areas of the muscles that are affected, uh, it's going to be in the front of the leg and, and, the, and the side, and so it, affects, it tends to affect this ankle area uh, primarily, uh, the ankle joint. And um, you know, as this muscle atrophies, you can see the front of the leg will look much thinner and the bulk of, on the right side of the leg uh, on the lateral side of the leg looks uh, much smaller as well. So that's the general muscles involved. There could be other muscles involved, uh, but these are the uh, primary two muscles that kind of have uh, pathologies. Okay, so uh, that's the pathophysiology. Let's focus on the clinical aspects. Um, this does tend to be asymptomatic. Uh, up until about two years, um, that's when you start seeing symptoms. And these symptoms are related to being clumsy, uh, falling and tripping over. Uh, this could be due to primarily due to the uh, proprioceptive because uh, it is sensory neuropathy, so proprioception is going to be affected. And also because of weakness of the ankle, it tends to make them trip and fall often. Uh, so let's first look at the uh, motor symptoms here, motor type of uh, problems here. Uh, we have four pictures here, each showing a different type of uh, issue related to the uh, muscles. The first one here is going to be the stork leg. Uh, sorry, we'll feet, but legs here. Uh, so the stork leg, and so you can see that um, because of the peroneus and the tibial uh, muscle atrophy, you can see that the, the that the leg in the front and on the lateral sides are much thinner. So we call that a stork leg appearance. Uh, next we have the uh, pes cavus, uh, and so this leads to sprained ankles uh, often. And so what you can see here is that the uh, you know normally you should have a flat foot here, but it tends to kind of stop here and then arc. You have this high uh, upreaching arc uh, that you find there. Uh, the next thing that you can see here, you can see these deformed toes. Uh, these are called hammer toes. And, uh, and finally, we have claw hands. And claw hands occurs because you do tend to sometimes get um, contractions of the upper limb as well as the uh, lower limbs here. So both of these are, uh, can be uh, found in Charcot Marie Tooth Syndrome. And so these are the motor type of syndromes. Uh, what are some of the sensory uh, syndromes that you can find? Uh, first, is that you can get uh, paresthesia. Uh, and, and this is generally due because you, when you get low muscle mass, uh, this makes it easier to compress the sensory nerves. And so you tend to get these paresthesia. Uh, Pain-wise, there's actually decreased pain. And this is because you have an increased pain threshold as the spinal thalamic fibers uh, get involved in this uh, condition. And finally, you have the decreased proprioception and vibration with the dorsal column fibers because they are myelinated fibers and so they do you know they do get affected as well and this explains some of the clumsiness and the gait abnormalities uh, that are sometimes seen 
so generally, uh, this is a progressive uh, disorder that uh, goes on throughout their life. Um, however, they do have a normal lifespan and they are ambulatory, so which is good news. There are some things that can exacerbate it. Um, primarily, uh, this, this drugs can increase it, such as vincristine and uh, anesthetics. And also during pregnancy, uh, it also can be related. And this is generally thought of because of the progesterone effect. Finally, let's take a look at investigations. Uh, so which investigations you're going to want to do. Uh, nerve conduction velocity, obviously the uh, motor and sensory are going to be decreased by, the velocity going to be decreased by 60%. And again, this is going to make sense because myelin uh, tends to increase uh, conduction velocity. And since you don't have that, um, you're going to experience a decrease in that. Uh, next, um, you can do a sural nerve bi biopsy. Uh, the sural nerve is found on the back of the leg, um, but back of the calf. And so you take a biopsy from there. This is pretty diagnostic. And so here on the side, you can see we have a biopsy of the sural nerve here. Um, and so if you look at the uh, arrows, uh, here's one and there's another one, you can see that the uh, area around the nerve is thickened. And that's the uh, myelin sheath uh, that you're seeing there, the Schwann cell. And so that's called the onion bulb effect. Uh, beyond that, you can also do some genetic testing, uh, which can detect it. And this can also be detected, you know, uh, uh, antenatally using chronic villa sampling and you can and this genetic test can be done off of the blood doesn't necessarily need to be from the muscle um, finally uh, you creatine kinase um, EMG muscle biopsy generally not necessary because this is more of a nerve issue not a muscle issue so these will usually not show any major findings uh, management, how would you manage this condition? Again, there's no real cure, so you're probably primarily going to focus on supportive. And again, these people tend to live full lives. Um, the diaphragm is not affected like in other you know, muscular dystrophies or neuromuscular disorders. But, you know, they tend to pass away because of uh, respiratory failure. But here, since the diaphragm is not affected, we don't tend to have respiratory failure. So what you probably, the first thing that you want to do is you want to focus on orthotics. And what orthotics allow the patient to do is uh, stabilize the ankle. Um, and you do this by giving these stiff boots, uh, which go about mid-calf. And it gives and it provides the ankle with support to prevent the pest cavus that you may see and, and other uh, symptoms uh, that, that, that uh, arrive from the ankle. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can uh, start with physiotherapy. Um, you can try to do stretch exercises. And this can help decrease the frequency of ankle fractures. Finally, if you get severe surgery is an option. Primarily ankle, <coughs> uh, primarily ankle fusion uh, is, is what they tend to do. Uh, and as far as management, you do want to avoid some drugs. Like we talked about earlier, there are certain drugs that can increase the uh, progression of the disease. Uh, the first one being uh, vincristine, also some antiepileptics. Uh, uh, phenytoin, carbamazepine, these tend to affect more of the sensory side, uh, not necessarily the motor side. And finally, anesthetics, um, because they oftentimes do um, affect the muscles and the nerve fibers, they are, it's, it's still a question, but it, it's generally better to avoid them. Uh, thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.